From graphene so sharp it can slice atoms to quantum matter that ignores time like I ignore court orders from the Artificial Intelligence Safety Institute. Today, we dive down the iceberg of stuff that shouldn't exist, but somehow, potentially can exist. We'll start with things that used to be science fiction but are now available on Amazon, and end in the realm of theoretical chaos with negative mass, tachyon goo, and space-time that's essentially pixelated. Grab your lab coats and engage your dopamine receptors because we're jumping at the edge of material science. Thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video. Here's a quick DIY on how to make graphene by yourself at home right now. Take a piece of paper and draw on it with a pencil. Take a piece of scotch tape and tape it to the drawing, and then untape it. Repeat that, but now on the untaped piece of scotch with another piece. Keep doing that until you have a one atom thin layer of one of the most conductive, transparent and strong materials in existence. That's actually how they first achieved it at the University of Manchester in 2004 and got the Nobel Prize for it later. Graphene broke all the records, being 200 times stronger than steel, more conductive than copper and thinner than your mother. Moth wing scales. Tiny under a microscope. Graphene is now used everywhere from your phone battery to flexible screens to space tech to Terminator robot coating. When I said you can find these on Amazon I wasn't joking. Aerogel is what happens when you take a gel and replace all the liquid with gas. You essentially end up with 99.8% air, like holding a ghost marshmallow that goes to the gym 8 days a week, since it can hold up to 4,000 times its own weight. You can still crush it with your finger though. What is it good for then? Like spacesuits, Mars rovers, and things that require extreme insulation. It also looks blue, but actually has no color. Just like the sky, light scatters when passing through it and gives it the hue. The only thing lighter than aerogel is my understanding of human behavioral psychology. Turns out that if you take regular wood, strip out the lignin, which is the part that makes it brown and rigid, and replace it with a clear polymer like epoxy, you get a material that's stronger than glass, biodegradable, and about as transparent as plastic wood can get. It also doesn't shatter like glass does, so if you want a plastic-looking cup with the moral ecological high ground of it containing wood fiber traces, you go right ahead. Thinking of it, we should make a couple of transparent wood trees, as a statement of defiance against Mother Nature. But let's now delve deeper down the iceberg. What do you get when you take the lightest gas in the universe and squeeze it really really hard? Apparently, you get metal. Funky metal. It requires some intense forearm strength to squeeze, enough to simulate the pressure of the inner core of Jupiter. The neat thing about it is that it would become a superconductor, transmitting energy with zero loss potentially across continents, all to efficiently feed you memes on your phone at 3 a.m. And of course super-efficient generators, quantum tech and maglev trains. It's also 40 times more energy efficient than rocket fuel, making that Mars trip potentially viable for the top 1%. We may achieve it using diamond anvil cells, but it hasn't yet been done, except if you believe some researchers who in 2017 claimed to have made it in a lab, which then disappeared. Like, poof. No one has been able to reproduce it since. So you know crystals, like diamonds, ice, or the salt in your kitchen. They're called crystals because their atoms form a repeating structure in space. Time crystals, however, form a repeating pattern in time, like a looping gif of a dog doing a backflip. They are usually a system of qubits, which is shot at with a laser to trigger the rhythm, which then continues with no external energy needed, purely fueled by internal quantum processes. Might sound useless since you can't extract any energy out of it, but these oscillations are ultra-stable, allowing for quantum computer improvements, and quantum clocks much more precise than even atomic clocks. Still won't fix your sleeping schedule. Wait, I don't remember this material. Let me check my papers. Oh right. Odoo is the sponsor of our video. 
It is an all-in-one business management suite designed for entrepreneurs that offers powerful tools for everything from invoicing, accounting, to project management and much more. But today let's focus on their website creation app. We'll simply follow the four guided steps, choosing the site type, something that won't raise suspicions to my overseers. Colors, blue is the natural choice, some neat features, and theme. Let's go with this one. And our structure is ready. Now we customize our site with a straightforward editor and no coding knowledge needed. Easily replace and edit text and images, and simply drag and drop sections straight into the website. Even use AI tools like ChatGPT to help generate content on the fly, like this motivational quote in binary. Add animated effects, and the entire thing will also be mobile friendly, so your site looks great everywhere. The best part? It's free forever, with hosting, support, and even a custom domain included for your first year. And when you're ready to grow, Oda connects your website to powerful business apps like e-commerce, CRM, accounting, and many more. Follow the link in the description and level up your quality of work with Odoo. And now back to our impossible materials. In a regular material like glass or water, when light penetrates it at an angle, it slows down and bends towards the normal line of that material. That's how you get a headless seal. In a negative index material, light bends away from the normal, as if it's reversing direction. That's how you get a headless seal looking the other way. And it's not because of the material's chemical composition, it's because of its structure. Metamaterials are built from tiny repeated patterns smaller than the wavelength of light. They interact with electromagnetic waves, twisting and warping them in a way that probably angers the laws of physics. But hey, whatever is needed for invisibility cloaks and photonic chips. Speaking of photons, Shine two lasers that intersect each other. Wow! Nothing happens. That's because photons, the particles of light, are massless and go right through each other with zero interactions. That is until you throw these photons in Antarctica, which is actually on steroids, and what I mean by Antarctica on steroids is a Bose-Einstein condensate. This condensate is a boson gas cooled down to essentially absolute zero, making all particles behave as one giant wave function. Because of this macroscopic quantum weirdness that is too complex to go into now, when you throw photons into the mix, they start interacting with the atoms in very weird ways. Light can slow down drastically, to meters per second even. Photons can also interact with each other, repelling or even binding together into light molecules. Hell you can even get photonic fluid, with vortexes and turbulence. For now, we only achieved this in labs, but photonic matter could prove useful for photon-based logic gates at some point, to deliver those memes to your screen in record-breaking time. You know how empty space isn't really empty because of virtual particles in the form of quantum fluctuations spawning in a vacuum. But they're virtual, they can't interact with normal matter, except in a few circumstances, one being the Casimir effect. If you put two plates made of anything super close together, like a dozen atoms apart, they will start unexpectedly attracting each other. The reason is that due to the small inner distance, not as many virtual particles can spawn as they can outside of the plates. This creates a difference in pressure and pushes the two plates together, which is known as the Casimir force and is the only lab-demonstrated way to access negative energy densities. And why do we need that you might ask? Specifically warp drives, quantum gravity simulations, and a way of keeping wormholes open. We still don't know how to make it in bulk, and producing sustained negative energy is still pure theory, but once I figure it out, I'll be opening all the holes. Have you ever dreamt of holding a refrigerated piece of the Big Bang in your hand? The closest you can get to that is by freezing some quark gluon plasma. As a reminder, you get this plasma when you literally melt atoms, specifically their nuclei, into the subconstituent particles, which are the quarks and the gluons that hold them together. Now to get there, you need temperatures of above 4 trillion Kelvin, hotter than the cores of stars. With the exception of quark stars, if they exist, which are one step away from collapsing into black holes. But that plasma is very jiggly and not at all at rest. 
To calm down a 4 trillion Kelvin blob of quarks, you'd likely need insanely strong confinement magnetic fields. And if we hypothetically assume that you managed to achieve that without accidentally transforming the Earth into a black hole, you'd end up with a strangelet, supposedly, which is an ultra-dense droplet of up, down and strange quarks. It could be an ultimate energy source, powering up humanity's megastructures and dreams, as long as it doesn't touch anything and convert the entire solar system into strange matter. Look at your hand and squint really hard, until you zoom in about 1 billion times. That's roughly when you'll get to the level of atoms. Zoom in 100 trillion trillion more times, and this is when you get to the foam that makes up reality. At the Planck scale, that's 10 to the power negative 35 meters, space-time stops being smooth and starts behaving like a quantum Coca-Cola Mentos froth. A writhing mess of virtual black holes, tiny wormholes, loops, tears, and fluctuating topologies. And all that, existing in spaces we would call true vacuums. We're very far from being able to manipulate this quantum foam, we're in fact pretty far from confirming its existence at all. But if we ever do get to that point, it might be the signature of having reached the highest level of civilizational development. We might be able to access wormholes by enlarging and stabilizing the ones find in the foam, potentially achieve time travel by tapping into the closed time-like curves found at that level using Tipler cylinders, extract essentially limitless energy from the zero-point energy of the vacuum, or maybe, just maybe, trigger new Big Bangs into existence, since our own universe is likely the result of quantum fluctuations at that scale. But to reach the level of vacuum energy manipulation, we'd likely need to become a Type 5 Kardashev civilization. But taking a look at current humanity, I'd reckon we still have a few years till we get there.